top was USA and in between Germany, US, US and some four or five countries. Australia was not there because it, is <laughs> it, it was eliminated. So he wrote a paper in 1951 saying that fat is the be all and end all of atherosclerosis and heart disease. 1961 there was a thinking biochemist in London University. He is very very interesting fellow. This fellow did a study, same data he took. Instead of fat, he took sugar. So he put sugar in the x-axis, heart attack in the y-axis and straight line. <laughs> and he said, cane sugar is the be all and end all of atherosclerosis. 1963, I had a colleague of mine in the London University, we were working together. He was a very good cardiologist. So he was collecting data on number of trousers sold in Europe since the second world war and heart attack. So he put the thing straight line again. What does it mean? Since the second world war, there was affluence in Europe. Europe had more money. So people ate more sugar. People ate more fat. People buy, bought more trousers. And now this is called the, the, what is called parallelism. These two things go up. If you have a lot of money, don't you buy two trousers. Suppose if you didn't have money, you will buy only one trouser. If you still didn't have money, you will only have a loincloth. So this is, this is the, what happens in society. But then, you call it a cause effect. That's the dangerous thing. Now omega-3 came, omega-6 came, omega-3 went away. Now there are enough papers to say, eating too much omega-3 is very bad for the heart. So this is not real science. This is called reductionist science. Where you reduce everything into two bits and have some relationship. I will tell you now, you all get worried. Oh, my, my tummy is big, uh, my sugar is slightly on the higher side. There is a thing called cholesterol, I believe. I don't know what that is. It is a white powder, I know. It does, it is a harmless thing. You, you need it. If you don't have cholesterol, you will die because every cell wall is cholesterol. Did you understand that? And you get billions of cells every day being new formed. Okay, I said you are all six months old. To be six months old, you must have plenty of cholesterol. Now, if your doctor goes and you reduce your cholesterol, Probably you will meet your maker a little faster, quicker. That is all what happens. Now anyway, all this came, all this went. They were all connected. Then we had a study called Mr. Fit Study, MRFIT, Multiple Risk Factor Intervention Trial, which started 25 years ago. And when it started in the 80s, President Nixon was the president. So he reluctantly sanctioned 150 million dollars for this study, 150 million dollars and told them, this enormous amount of money, I want very strong results. Very strong positive results. Did you get the, all that now? Okay. It went on. It studied 500,000 Americans, picked up 100,000 Americans and followed them up now for 25 years. In the first five years, they said, oh, yes, reducing cholesterol, reducing sugar, reducing your blood pressure is very good for you. It went on and on and on. At the 25th year, somebody analyzed it to find out that risk factor interventions with the drugs or surgery will reduce the risk factors but not the risk of premature death. Did you get that? Risk factors will only reduce the risk factors. In short, this is surrogate evidence of something. Like for example, I have a nice slide. Today I didn't bring slides because I thought, no, I don't, shouldn't show you slides. I have a nice slide for global warming. Somebody got Nobel Prize for global warming. Nothing has happened. Globe has been warmer than this 100 years ago. Don't worry about that. Now, somebody produced global warming data. I have a surrogate evidence. I have a slide which shows women's underwear since the 18th century. In the 18th century, the underwear was very big. You know, it used to come almost up to the knee. Then it became smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. It's almost invisible now because its globe is, <laughs> globe is warming, you know. <laughs> what is that called? Surrogate evidence. And the MR Fit study showed that at the end of 25 years, intervened people died more than the not intervened people. Did you get that? Whose blood pressure, sugar, everything was tightly controlled with drugs. They were not there, but the others were there still. <laughs> it's like Yale University kept a record of their gold medalists in athletics. The gold medalists were not there after 50. The silver medalists were still there up to 60. The bronze medalists were running till 70. And the also rants were there 80, 90 and all. You will be surprised, a study was done in French nursing homes. Nursing homes in there means, doesn't mean in the Indian concept of nursing home. Nursing home is old age home. And there were ladies 80, 90 years old. They had cholesterol 800, 900 and all. So the study said, if you have very high cholesterol, you live long. 
which is true actually which is true so friends this is a science that we are talking about that is called the science of fish net hypothesis so peter medever wrote science cannot answer questions because science is not holistic science is not designed to answer such questions science can say how big is the fish why is the fish in the sea why is some fish not in the sea why are some fishes in the river science doesn't answer where is god science doesn't answer so he says science is only designed for a particular purpose like for example railway engine is designed to run on a railway track supposing you go and say i want this railway engine to fly like a plane it can't do so a question is science can science answer god no because it can't it's not designed to answer god so science don't think science is the end of everything actually i would recommend you a good book it's called against method what's the book's name against method our professor from bombay must read this hmm because you know he is teaching science so against method this is written by a man called peter fire up bet f e y e r b e n d otherwise he'll make a mistake in the spelling f e y e r b e n d fire up bet paul he was a professor of science philosophy in the london school of economics it's one of the you no know, famous schools and there science philosophy is a very big department it was dominated for about 30 years by a great thinker called karl popper have you heard of popper p o p p e r karl popper dominated london school of economics for 30 years followed by his student firebun and firebun so beautifully writes he says the all the ills of the 21st century world are due to the so called science's superiority supremacy over all other rights of human thinking today you think anything is scientific what is scientific going to moon is scientific right 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 of course we didn't go to moon we went to mars that doesn't matter that's because pq is pr is pq is not equivalent to Q, qp 2 into 3 may be 6 but 3 into 2 need not be 6 in real science but you teach the student 2 into 3 6 3 into 2 also is 6 that's called absolutist mind we develop a student of an absolutist mind one track mind like a tunnel vision like a horse what we need is a multivistic mind you have to take all things into consideration even that is no good there are there are some schools which teach you multivistic school but not not enough the real wisdom is you must have wisdom that is you take absolutist multivistic and think yourself and then come up with your own solution that's called wisdom so friends knowledge is not wisdom knowledge dwells in heads replete with thoughts of other men but wisdom dwells in heads attentive to their own knowledge is so proud i know so much you know i am a phd i am this i am md i am but wisdom says i don't know much wisdom is so humble because it knows no more knowledge and wisdom far from being one have nothing in common at all the wiser you are the humbler you become and that's indian education indian education says vidya dadati vinaya you become humbler and humbler the humbler you are more educated you are but today education gives you arrogance degree this all the western thoughts we are taking it and fully imbibing it and saying that's the right way to do it no there are other ways to do it also so coming back to our point fish for health i am supposed to talk on health now i must i have defined fish now i have to define health then only i can say what is for what what is health what's your idea of health you have all heard alma alta uh, this thing of uh, the united who it's absence of physical mental spiritual environmental this that all kinds of absence of this no no disease at all is called health no there is no human being from birth to death who has no disease if i now scan all of you for a cancer cell each one of us including me will have not one cancer at least about 10 cancers to 100 cancers but they don't become cancer disease they are cancer cells today what do we do get every woman take a cervical smear and say oh dysplastic cell ah this may become a cancer this is called predicting the unpredictable linearly did you understand linearity doesn't work in science in universe universe is non linear how can you linearly predict you can have a cancer cell in the cervix and the woman can live 100 years you may not have a cancer cell in the cervix the woman may come down with a very bad cancer in one year 
both are possible and this is possible because the predictions to the future are not scientifically correct. Take why go that far, take your weather prediction, you think it is very scientific no? Mangalore is supposed to have rains today, did you see yesterday's prediction? Go out and see whether it is raining, it won't rain. Kobe in Japan had the best supercomputer, but before that huge thing, an earthquake happened in Kobe which killed thousands of people, even seconds before that, the nearest meteorological laboratory had no inkling into that. If you really want to know how you can't predict the future, please write down, you are writing one, right. Predicting the unpredictable future, predicting the unpredictable future. Did you write that? The author's name is Firth, William Firth. Firth, F-I-R-T-H, W-J. And the journal is, this you can get free on the internet. Journal is called British Medical Journal, B-E-M-J. Got it? Here is 1991. Now, Vancouver system you follow, I saw outside. So, semicolon, 303. Colon, 1568. Go and see. Now, what does it show? You cannot predict tomorrow because there is no tomorrow according to quantum physics. Tomorrow does not exist. We create a tomorrow too. There is no world. World is a Maya. Now, you all sit here, right? I close my eyes. Are you here? I do not know. As long as my eye is open and my retina is okay and photons come from you and hit my retina, you are alive. When photons do not leave you and do not come and hit me, you, I do not know whether you are alive or not. This is called work like height, Maya, the real Maya. And today, E is not E is equal to MC squared, E is equal to M. Did you understand this? Energy is matter, matter is energy. In short, human body is an illusion of the human mind. So, you are not body and mind, you are mind as body. So, we used to say psychosomatic disease in the mind and all. All diseases are in the mind. The whole world is mind, did you know that? Francis Henry is a professor of physics in Johns Hopkins University who wrote, this universe is immaterial, there is no matter, immaterial, dash, spiritual and mental, full stop. Actually, human body is immaterial spiritual and mental. So, now health is not absence of disease because there is nobody who has no disease. We all have disease, but we do not die of that disease because diseases are not supposed to kill. But we doctors frighten you saying that, ah, you got a disease, now you may die. If we do not frighten you, you won't come to me. So, this is called disease mongering, scare mongering. So, I call our system as medical scare system. I tell you, my God, what is your tummy man, so big, you will die early. There is no evidence to say that at all. Because the tummy, Churchill had the biggest tummy, did you know that? He was 256 pounds. He was smoking like a chimney and he was eating like a fish, drinking like a fish, not what the fish drinks. And he was eating like a pig with all that and he was not exercising at all. 89 years he lived, nothing happened to him. What happened to him? Nothing happened to him. That does not mean you can also do that. <laughs> your future depends on not just your body, but on your mind. I always tell people, it is not what you eat that kills you, whether it is fish or omega. It is what eats you that kills you. Did you understand that? Your negative thoughts. So, Ayurveda so beautifully says this. Krodha, Shokha, Bhaya, Ayasa, Viruddhanna Bojana, Taponnalan. Katva, Amla, Kshara, Lavana, Tikshnoshnati, Rakta, Pitta, Prakopet. All diseases come because of the mind. And today modern medicine says, the diseases originate in the mind, develop in the mind and probably die in the mind or kill you in the mind. And there is a beautiful book written by a Nobel laureate girl, young lady who got a Nobel Prize when she was still a postdoc and her name is Candace Pert and Candace writes this book called molecules of emotion, because it is Candace who first showed opiate receptors outside the brain, showing that every cell has a mind, which I call as membrane. In the cell membrane, there is a brain, membrane, and that has an antenna, integral membrane protein, because the cell is hygroscopic, but the integral membrane protein is a whole, and there is an antenna. So, when you get the universal consciousness come and tickle that, you become born. When that leaves it, you die. In short, Human body, human being is like 
the picture of the television box. The television box, you see the picture of maybe Hema Malini dancing. Hema Malini is not in the box. The energy of Hema Malini's vibrations are caught in the antenna. Now you switch it off, Hema Malini dies. You go to the next room, another television, switch it on, Hema Malini is born there. Human being is like that. On the day you are a zygote, when you are single cell, I told you what is your weight. The antenna gets the universal consciousness, which gives you all the information in the world. You are born. The day it leaves, you are dead. In short, this body is not, you are not inside this body. This is like the television box. You are not inside the box. But your energy is inside the box. So, human body is energy. So, now, what is health then? The latest definition of health is enthusiasm to work. Health is enthusiasm to work, comma, and enthusiasm to be compassionate, full stop. Very simple. You get up in the morning and say, do I want to go to the college today? Do I really love to go to the college? You are healthy. Do I have to do something good to somebody in the college? You are very healthy. Don't ask for any other question. And as long as you are healthy and you are able to work and be compassionate, you are healthy, says Ayurveda. Samadatuhu, samagrishya, samadoshaha, malakriya, prasanna atma indriya manaha svasta ityabhidiyate. You shit well, you piss well, you drink well, you eat well, you sleep well, you work well and you don't hate nobody, you are healthy. And that's what the latest quantum physics science says, that if you don't hate nobody, you will never be unhealthy. That's why you see P.C. Thomas at the age of 73, fit like a fiddle because he loves his students in the morning. The first question he asks, I'm going to college, I'm going to college, I'm going to college. I'm going to college, 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 I'm going to college. And I always jokingly tell people, if you are healthy, don't see a doctor. If you want honor, don't go to the police. And if you want justice, don't go to the court. If you are not well, you go to the hospital because we doctors have a formula from our father, Hippocrates. Cure rarely. <laughs> when I tell the truth, you laugh. <laughs> when I don't tell the truth, also you laugh. Cure rarely, comma. Comfort mostly, comma. But console always, full stop. Now, I will explain that. Cure is a word which has no meaning in medicine because cure in the Oxford Dictionary says bring back to the original state, which is not possible at all in any disease. Even common cold, you have common cold, millions of no cells are dead, replaced by fibrous tissue. Can I bring it back? No. Comfort mostly. What is your job? Your pain, I can relieve it. Your breathlessness, I can relieve it. You can't breathe, I can make you breathe. You can't shit, I can make you shit. You can't piss, I can make you piss. I can't do nothing more. Now, if you can't do, I can't do anything, you have a cancer, I can't treat, I can console you. After all, you say, why are you worried? What is death? Death is not the end of life. Death is only a, you know, part of life. And supposing, let us say, God forbid, you won't die of this disease. Supposing you die, so what? You will either go to hell or heaven. That's where you wanted to go. Heaven is where you wanted to go and you're a good man, you'll certainly go to heaven. Perchance, God has not, Peter, St. Peter has not kept his books right, correct. You go to hell, so what? So many of your friends are there, you're enjoying life, Jerome. <laughs> This is called consoling somebody. <laughs>